bring back the random crap. <laughs> bring back the random camera accessories variety show. Pew, pew. Let's go. All right, so the first thing that we have right here is the Shure MV7 Podcast USB mic with a tripod, and it costs about $270. And I'm mad because this is literally the same Manfrotto Pixie tripod. I could have just used the one that I have right here, but no, the literal size of this hoe is just too damn big. But you guys are hearing this right now. Let me know what you guys think of this mic. I think my plosives are pretty bad, probably. So let me know if you have any recommendations in terms of pop filter to use with this mic. So this is supposed to be the affordable USB version to the popular Shure SM7B microphone. You know, the mic that Michael Jackson recorded or a thriller on. I swear, if you watch a single SM7B review, they will always make it a fact that Michael Jackson recorded freaking thriller on that mic. But hey, you know, that's, it sounds pretty good. But the MV7 here actually connects directly to the computer and it uses the Sure Plus Motive app to control things like your compression, your EQ, and your gain. You can also do it on the mic itself, but it's much easier with the computer app. But I like it so far. Let me know what you guys think. If this sounds really good, then I would just uh, not travel with the SM7B and just bring this along since the SM7B does require a separate audio interface and a cloud lifter. This right here just goes right into the USB, which speaking of, Sure, why the F does this mic not use USB-C? I mean, the connection going into the computer is already USB-C. Why is the mic itself using micro USB? Like, I don't understand. That's the other gripe that I have with this microphone. But anyways, let's move on. All right, so this next thing right here is a creator clamp overhead setup. It's a two-piece setup actually, and it's from Slick. When I requested the 500 millimeter to review, Tokina actually sent this out to me as well. And it's actually a nice portable overhead setup that I can use. I actually used it to unbox the 500 millimeter lens and some of the stuff that I'll be showing in this video here. What's funny is that when I'm not using this overhead setup here, Vivian would take it. So then she can have an overhead light setup for when she needs to use her laptop at night. You stole my light. I like it, it's helpful. Our Airbnb here doesn't have the best nighttime lighting setup, but during the day, oh yeah, we get plenty of natural window lighting. Oh man, how I'm gonna travel with everything. <laughs> All right, the next item we have on the list is the small rig foldable cage handle for phones. I actually saw a ad for this on the Amazon page because I was looking for a cage system for the Xperia Pro I. Just look at how cool this thing is. This is like an origami style folding cage for your mobile device. And you can just fold it back in like this tuck into your pocket and boom, you can just move on. You got like three Kochu adapters here on the top with additional quarter inch screw holes for additional accessories and one down here too for the tripod. And you can actually put a battery here into this thing too so then you can use the red button here to trigger uh, Bluetooth recording on your phone. Now, unfortunately, this thing does feel very plasticky. That's why it's so light, I guess. And another thing that I don't like here is the clamp itself. It just feels very flimsy. If I need to interact with my phone, it just pushes it, which worries me if I push too hard, I would push my phone out. So doesn't really inspire a whole lot of confidence. Good thing the Xperia Pro has a wrist strap, so in case that does happen, I don't have to worry too much, but small rig, this is such an amazing idea. Just gotta improve on that phone clamp portion of this thing. Maybe make the teeth a little bit longer, but I really love the concept of this. So my rig here, I put the Xperia Pro I vlog monitor on the top and bought a coil USB-C cable with a right angle adapter to hook them up. And I got the Sennheiser mic here on the side because the Sony monitor has a three and a half millimeter mic port that supports the TRS connection. You know, the one that's more common between mics and cameras. If I was using the headphone port, then I would need a TRRS connection, which the Shure mic does supply, but I'll just stick with the TRS connection. So again, this is really cool, but unfortunately, I likely will not be keeping this. So the next thing on the list is the DJI OM5, and uh, I actually don't have any B-roll of it, and that's because I've returned it to Best Buy. I like the concept of it. You know, I like how it has that magnetic phone mount uh, clamp that I can just attach and quickly detach off of the gimbal. It's really nice. But when I was actually shooting with it, I noticed a lot of footage that I got was very jittery. It was very noticeable, especially when I'm coming from the Zhuyin Crane M3, which is understandable because the M3 is twice the price and it's made for mirrorless cameras. So the motor is much stronger. So I would rather go for better stability than to do more work in post with the OM5. So I just returned it. 
That, and I didn't really like the extension pull in practice from the OM5. Like, it's great in theory, but you have to do tricky angling maneuvering on the thing just to get a certain shot, or else your range of motion will be limited with the OM5. Now, speaking of gimbals, I bought this PGY Tech quick release system for the Crane M3, but I quickly realized it doesn't work. My idea, that is, that didn't work. It just doesn't balance on the M3 even if I'm using a light lens. The idea was that I can keep my square arc of Swiss plates on the cameras without having to unscrew it for the special adapter from Zhuyun, but I ran into two issues. Number one, the Peak Design square plates don't work on this. You have to use the PGY Tech's snap lock plate, and vice versa, you can't use the PGY plate on the Peak Design capture clips. It goes in, but it doesn't lock. The only thing that both these plates do work on is the Peak Design travel tripod, but uh, I really wish it worked on the Crane M3. Like, I love that gimbal, but I do not like having to keep switching out plates just so I can use it. So hopefully, Zuyun will make the Crane M4 to support Arca Swiss. I am, I am really hoping for that. All right, this next thing right here is an anti-reflection hood, which costs about $15. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised that I barely got this since I do a lot of observation deck photography and they have these window panes um, up there, obviously for safety reasons. But why you would want to use something like this is because you can actually shoot out the window without worrying worrying about the glares from indoor lights and the reflections. I honestly don't know how good this one is. I was kind of hoping to get the lens skirt one where I can just use the suction cup of that and just like stick it to the window to make sure that all the light is blocked out. That one, I don't have to worry too much about angling my camera too much, but this one, if you place the camera at an angle, light can still seep in. So if you guys have a better recommendation, please let me know. The lens skirt one is currently out of stock right now. And so far this one does the job, but I am looking for alternatives if you guys have any. Oh, and I actually got one for the Xperia Pro I. Look how cute this thing is. Unfortunately, if I want the hood to cover all of the lenses, uh, this part right here, this phone clamp, would hit the shutter button of the Xperia Pro I, which is not ideal, so I have to return it. But I bought this because I wanted to use the Xperia Pro I to do time lapses. The raw DNGs plus the one inch sensor on the phone gives me a lot of dynamic range to work with in post to make some killer time lapses. Now, unfortunately, there is no built in time lapse function on the Xperia Pro I through the native app, so I have to get this uh, separate app called Manual Camera to do interval shooting, which actually works really well. I actually learned this from uh, Drew Geraci. He's a Sony Alpha artisan, the guy who's in charge of the uh, House of Car time lapse opening. Yep, that's him. So uh, if you want to check out more of his work or learn more about time lapses, I'll link his channel description box below. So it is a piercing cold here in New York City. So I got these pair of gloves from B&H of all places, but I think these are like designed for photography because check this out right here. The index finger and the thumb right here have these magnetic flaps. So then I can still use things like my phone or interact with the camera's interface or use the shutter button. So far, I like it. I haven't really put it to the test yet, but in the next couple of weeks, I'll be outside shooting. So we'll see how well this works. So tune back into the next accessories video to see an update to these gloves. And last but not least, I got this uh, Aritzia Mr. Super Puff 2.0 jacket. This is at the recommendation of Vivian, but this thing is warm, you know, cause we're LA natives, born and raised there. So we're used to the hot, good weather, the heat. But when we got here, it's super cold and this is perfect. This puffer is like really warm. I can just be in a literal t-shirt and this thing just blocks out the wind and keep me warm which is perfect because when we go into department stores, I sweat like literal buckets. So I can just take this off and just walk Ooh, around in my t-shirt. Sexy. Oh yeah. It's also waterproof too. Now the only thing is that this thing is very costly. It's $400. I mean, it's like half the price of a Canada goose. Yeah, I mean, it's very comparable from what, I, from what <sighs> I've been waterproof, told. waterproof, windproof, and it's filled with responsibly sourced goose down. But what do I know? I review cameras, not fashion. All right, guys, hopefully you guys found this video helpful or at least entertaining. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and tune back into next month to see what are my new pickups and an update to some of the gear that I've talked about in this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. No coding knowledge whatsoever. Perfect for people like me because I just want to make YouTube videos for you guys and not have to worry about coding my entire website. 
Simply just select one of their templates to get started. Every aspect is easily customizable with their drag and drop feature. Whether you're in need of a portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a simple blog, design it with Squarespace. Use my link down below to test it out. And when you're ready to launch your first website or domain, use my code Jason Vong to save 10% off. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.